Kevin Swanson here, veterinarian and volunteer with GiveSmiles.us, a not-for-profit shelter project with the mission of helping dog lovers go well beyond loving their dogs to really understand them. This video, Homeward Bound, What to Do First to Set Your New Dog Up for Success, is one of several videos we've created to help new adopters and people willing to open their homes to foster shelter dogs. If you are adding a new dog to a household where other dogs reside, please watch my video, Introducing Dogs to One Another, next for help in making your introductions go super smooth, whether at a shelter, adoption event, or when you arrive home prior to entering the house. It describes an approach that we've used with over 1,000 dogs of all sizes, breeds, and ages, and it's worked perfectly with over 99.9% .9 of them. Really? One German Shepherd messed up our 100% record, and we sent him on his way without introductions being made. He just wasn't ready, and we knew better than to push the issue. If you have already added your new dog to your household, and you are well beyond your first few hours together, please watch this video anyway. It will improve your dog-savvy skills for the next time, and you will then be in the position to help others. Thanks! So, you're pretty excited about your new dog, and your mind races with visions of your upcoming life together. Let's see what we can do to help you shape the dog of your dreams from day one, minute one. It's a safe bet that you'd like your dog to be relaxed and connected with you in a healthy way. You'd like him to get along with others and to follow your lead in new situations. You'd like him to follow your house rules, and because you'd like for him not to develop behavioral issues such as hyperactivity, destructiveness, stranger reactivity, resource guarding, submissive urination, and the like, you know it pays to be proactive. It's just plain smart to prevent issues as opposed to have to address them when they crop up. Although no 17-minute video is going to provide you with all the information you need to know, I can help you do the one thing that is most important right now. And that is, see the events of the next few hours through your dog's eyes. Seeing your journey together through his eyes is the key to a successful and peaceful transition that sets both of you up for success. For this reason, Whenever I tell you what we do here at Safe Harbor Farm, Canine Rescue and Rehab in this column, I will also tell you why it's important to your dog in this column. Like a first grader entering a classroom for the first time, any dog heading to a new location wants and needs to know in ways that reflect his understanding and not just ours, what is expected of him, where he can go, who he can trust, who he should follow and what he should do to get his needs met. He looks for patterns, and he quickly picks up routines. When a routine is done in a calm, confident, positive, and reasonably authoritative manner, he understands what's coming next, where he might fit in, and who will provide for his needs. He begins to feel safe, and his subsequent relaxation spreads to others around him. Guiding a new dog to success from day one, minute one, is only fair. No one, dog or human, enjoys making mistakes because the rules weren't explained. No one likes the stress of uncertainty. The welcome home routine we recommend addresses the concerns of new dogs. It puts their people in the director's seat. It helps dogs form useful and quite practical associations, and it communicates important rules clearly. Most importantly, it begins the moment you attach your leash to your new dog's collar. First. Before you get into your vehicle, allow him to empty his tanks, that is, his bladder and bowels, in a well-chosen spot. Why? For one thing, his ride home will be more comfortable. For another, before you ask any dog to meet your needs, your need for him to be quietly watchful, companionable, and well-behaved, for instance, it is important to meet his needs first. In doing this, don't let your dog drag you around. You choose the place, and you choose to leave only when he has emptied both his black tank and his yellow tank. Why? This sends a message that walks with you are going to be about companionship, team building, and joint exploration, not marking every corner and cranny of the world with his urine. This is a good time to mention the male dog myth. That's the one that says all male dogs must empty their bladders a little bit at a time. Hogwash. 
as a veterinarian, behaviorist, and foster home for many dozens of male dogs, none of which kept this behavior longer than their first 24 hours with me, it's just not true. Check out our video on the topic. If you know what to do, it's really not that hard at all to teach any dog, including male dogs, to empty their bladders completely so your walks together are so much more enjoyable. Once your dog has, in your estimate, emptied both his bladder and bowels, take a relaxed but well-paced walk with him at your side for at least 10 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes is even better with boisterous, under-exercised adolescents. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume that you have a healthy young dog of any size or breed. But if that isn't the case, simply modify what I say to match your dog's needs and capabilities. Even if there is no other place to walk than around a shelter parking lot, take the time to do this. Why? It fulfills your new dog's need to move, something you may not have been able to do that much at the shelter or foster home. It sets him up to be calmer and more quietly observant on his ride home. It is also an opportunity for you to make simple decisions and for him to follow them. Now, some people are excellent dog walkers, while some have no idea how. Here, I can only recommend that you do your best to calmly lead the way with your dog at your side. It may require occasional go out and come back games on your part to give your dog a little wiggle room for exploration. And for that, carrying some tasty biscuits and following this training hint will help a lot. After all, he doesn't really know you yet, and you haven't earned his trust and respect yet. Just make sure that where he's walking is at your direction. If he's walking ahead of you, it's after you've directed him to go out, and it's followed periodically with your direction for him to come back to your side for a short massage, a big smile, a treat if you have one, and some more paired walking at your side. Dogs are like little kids faced with a substitute teacher for the day. It's their nature to size you up quickly, the better to gauge just what they can get away with, and in each instance, who is going to call the shots. The good news is, it is also in their nature to repeat behaviors that have been rewarded. How dogs communicate with each other via posture, position, movement, and energy is discussed in great detail in a user-friendly reference mentioned at the end of this video. For now, just take my word that position communicates a great deal to dogs, and it dictates many of the subtle things we do in our welcome home routine. Time to head home. Picture your new dog sitting on the lap of a family member on the front passenger seat of your vehicle. Now visualize him seat belted comfortably and securely in the back seat. In each case, what are we telling him as he embarks upon his new journey? Because we want our dogs to be terrific little followers, as opposed to decision makers when they may not make the best of decisions at times, we insist that all of our dogs ride on the back seat, taking a follower position from day one. Although this may be something you change for various reasons later on, right now your goal should be to encourage two good baselines for future behavior, and that is what this position encourages. The first is your dog's calm watchfulness, and the second is simply good followship. How about when you arrive home? Should everyone pile out of the car and race inside to celebrate? Of course not. What kind of message would that send to your new dog? What kind of guidance would that give him? Instead, before approaching your front door, we recommend that you repeat what you did before entering your car. Take him to a quiet, out-of-the-way spot to eliminate and then walk with him at your side, together with any other dogs in your household, for as long as you can. We aim for at least a half hour. Why? Your goal is for everyone to enter the house in a quiet and relaxed state. The associations you want your new dog to make are, your home is a place of peace. Your new dog is now a member of the home team. And you are the head of the household, the decision maker. When you walk your dogs quietly at your side before entering your home in a peaceful, cooperative, and now rather tired state, you communicate tranquil coexistence and serene energy, not unbridled excitement coupled with an anything-goes attitude, and you convey this in a way that any dog will understand. Just as the concept of position is important on the drive home, 
it is when it comes to calmly entering your home the first time too. This is where you, as the head of the household, can subtly level the psychological playing field of your dogs. People without dogs should enter first. People leading naturally less assertive dogs should enter next. And people leading naturally more assertive dogs should enter with their dog at their side or just behind them last. In addition to subtly leveling the psychological playing field of the dogs, doing this puts you again in the role of calm decision maker. And this sets you up to be the one your new dog will look to when it comes time for other decisions to be made. Notice what matters isn't new dog or old dog status, or even a dog size or age. What matters is each dog's natural assertiveness, something that any new or old dog of any size or age might possess. The next step in our welcome home routine is an enjoyable bath with a slow, deep massage built in. Why? Because it's another way to show love and take care of your new dog's most basic needs. And because as welcome as your new dog is, I'm sure you want to be sure you haven't brought home unwanted parasites like fleas or nasty germs like parvo. In that regard, don't forget to soap up your new dog's paws and pads thoroughly. What's next? A guided tour. To further reinforce that your new dog's job is a calm following of his people, and just as important, to give him a way to learn the rules of his new home in a quiet, wholly positive, hands-off manner, Walk your dog in a relaxed manner throughout your house and yard using an umbilical leash. If you're not familiar with the technique, first tie a loose belt or a short cloth leash around your waist, then hook a small carabiner to it. These lightweight hooks are available in the sporting and key making sections of any large store. Lastly, hook your dog's leash, shortened to three to four feet in length, to the carabiner in a way that allows it to slide behind your back to the right and to the left. Why use an umbilical leash at this point instead of holding your dog's leash in your hand? Umbilical leashing helps to keep your posture upright and natural. It keeps your focus up and forward and not so much on your dog. That allows him to relax and simply follow you. And it stops a lot of tension from traveling unconsciously from your shoulders down your arms and leash to your dog. Without a lot of conversation, Walk around your home, doing routine tasks with him at your side or just behind you. Wash your dishes, retrieve your mail and sort through it, sit back and watch television for five minutes, take a walk in the backyard, browse a book, whatever you would normally do on a quiet evening. This practice helps your new dog build the following associations. The energy level desired is calm. The state of mind you desire is relaxed. And the behavior you want to see when questions arise is follow the leader. When you pass a spot that you'd like him to frequent, for example, his bed, unhook his leash from the carabiner and quietly drop a small dog biscuit. Without a word spoken, he will get the message that this spot is a good spot to be. If you'd like to associate a one-word command with the spot, simply drop another biscuit and say, place, lightly, and give him a big smile. Later, you can build upon this with repetition, and he will know where to go when you say the word place. Place is such a useful command, and it is so easy to teach using repetitive games that are fun for the dogs. If you would like your new dog not to bark automatically at doorbells, this is a great time to have a family member or friend ring the doorbell a few times as you walk throughout your house. Your ignoring the bell will help to create an association between it and relaxation a polite response that will be very valuable later on. Should there be a piece of furniture or another area that you don't want him to approach, pause by it for a moment using a loose leash. Say no or uh-uh once in a matter-of-fact tone without extra emotion before walking on with nothing else said. This doesn't sound like much, but it will be enough for any dog seeking to know the rules to understand. From the expression on little Topeka's face in the lower picture, you'd think I shouted the word no. But really, I only said it once, matter-of-factly, with no emphasis at all. It only goes to show that emphasis with dogs really isn't needed. Umbilical leashing, together with a small amount of proactive house training, allows new dogs to learn the lay of their new land quickly. 
It is an exercise that can be shared by multiple family members, the better to involve everyone, even young children, in the process. And it's a practice that you can use to introduce your dog to future events, new locations, and new people. It can also be used spontaneously to encourage calmer, more watchful behavior in existing settings. Similar to the other steps in our welcome home routine, it follows the five C's of good communication with canines. It is calm, clear, consistent, confident, and canine intuitive. Conclude your leashing exercise with a relaxed period of reading, computer work, or quiet television. This is bonding time, and it is a wonderful wrap-up to your welcome home process. I hope this video has piqued your interest in learning more about your dogs, learning about canine culture, canine body language, and why one thing works well while another doesn't, teaches us a lot about ourselves. That said, the more you're willing to see certain things through the eyes of your dogs, the broader and better your world will become. If you found this video helpful, please pay it forward and tell others about it. Subscribe to the GiveSmiles.us YouTube channel to hear about new videos when they're ready. And if you'd like to learn a lot more about your dogs, all pretty positive, practical, and proactive stuff, check out the first two chapters, table of contents, and chapter excerpts of this book at www.givesmiles.us. All funds raised by its purchase on that website help with animal rescue and pet parenting projects. Thanks everyone, and best wishes for an awesome life with your new dog.